Okay, and our final uh, Yeda recipient is Kristen Radimaker of District uh, uh, 12. Kristen is also this year's uh, Jaeger Scholar. Um, teaching through phenomena allows Kristen to engage her students, figuring out the science behind what happened, sparking natural curiosity. Radimaker focuses on students learning science through working together, solving problems, making mistakes, embracing them, and then trying again. Kristen. Um, first, I want to thank NSTA for having me here, and I also want to thank Dr. Yeager for this amazing award and this opportunity. So, um, I kind of fell into science. My background is actually um, in special education, and I, I always taught science, but I never thought of myself as a, as a science teacher until a few years ago when I had uh, the opportunity to work on writing some curriculum with some amazing mentors, Dr. Brian Reiser and Mr. Michael Novak and Dr. Joe Krychuk, um, who actually came to Illinois, well, I guess two of them actually live there, um, came to us as a group of 40 teachers and spent a couple hundred hours with us giving us some wonderful, amazing professional development. So through that, um, I had heard this phrase over and over, active and engaged, active and engaged. So I kept thinking to myself, what, what does that mean to be active and engaged? So I was being evaluated one time about five years ago before Danielson came around Illinois. And I was talking to my administrator who, who evaluated me. And I was actually going through my administrator uh, training master's program at the time. And he goes, oh, that was a great lesson. The kids were active, they were engaged, they were focused. And I said, oh, how, do, how do you know? He goes, well, they were all sitting there, they were taking notes, they, you know, they were looking at you while you were lecturing. And I said, okay, all right. And so I'm thinking, when I was in high school, I was that kid. I sat there, I looked active. I was doing that 80s version of texting, you know, writing notes. Um, <laughs> but I wasn't really engaged. I, like, I was doing stuff, but it wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. But I was quiet. I didn't cause any trouble, usually. And then I was thinking about, like, what class was I at? So, Mr. Fireball was my high school chemistry teacher, and yes, that was his real name. And, and I thought about, though, like we were always doing stuff in his class. And I wanted my kids, my students, to be doing things. And in a special ed setting, sometimes that can be really difficult. I had nonverbal students, I had students with autism, I was co-teaching some classes where, you know, 30% of our students had IEPs, another 20% had 504 plans, and, you know, how, how are we going to do this? So, I thought about it, and we started, you know, planning. I co-teach all of my classes now. I teach horticulture and biology at the high school level, so we started taking the kids outside more. We started giving them group projects and we started giving them partner tasks to do all the time, more so than like your typical lab. And in special ed, in my self-contained classes, before I got there, they didn't do a lot of hands-on activities with that I thought was a real shame. So we started integrating those things into our classroom, and I started implementing phenomena and storylines and all of those things that we had heard about from Dr. Reiser and Michael Novak. And then I was thinking, so now that my kids are engaged, what is the goal? And again, a phrase they used over and over while we were developing storylines is, well, what do we want our kids to know and be able to do? Good question. So for a long time, I wanted them to learn this. For those of you who teach life science, this is probably a very familiar um, picture. So our goal at the end of this unit was they could match pictures with the definition of the phases of mitosis. 
Super engaging, right? Now I use this. This is the tree man. I don't know if any of you are familiar with him. Um, they call him the tree man because he has a wart problem that is so bad that his limbs kind of look like tree branches. So figuring out how this happens is way more engaging than memorizing that picture of mitosis. I co-teach also with a physics teacher, and we were thinking, like, he teaches this. I don't know what that is. It's math, some kind of math. Um, so he would use that formula, and he would teach the kids, and they would change the numbers out, and then they would do this lab that proved that what he told them was the truth. But now, he gives them these kind of pictures, and the kids have to figure out how that happened. It's way more engaging. As I teach horticulture, so these trees start from a little tiny seed. So where does all that stuff come from? Which is way harder to figure out than memorizing this formula for photosynthesis. So what we want our kids to know and be able to do is so much more than memorization of facts. So this process that I've been in in three years has really got me thinking now. Now I want them engaged and I want to use these phenomena and I want to know how I know that, you know, what we want them to do and all of these things. But my classroom was still very teacher focused. When I started teaching in my current position, I was given two binders. They look exactly like this because they're still in my desk drawer. And this is what was inside. Semester one and semester two, all laid out for me. And there's like intro vocabulary list I'm sure you're all very familiar with, you know. The first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna copy these 25 vocabulary words from the back of the book. And then in two weeks, we're going to test them in groups of five so you can match them with their definitions. So I kind of threw that away. I locked it in a desk drawer actually. And I tried to decide how to go from a teacher-focused classroom to a student-driven learning environment, which looks way different than me standing behind a podium showing a PowerPoint to my students. So like I said, I co-teach most of my classes, so I had to get my co-teachers on board as I was the special ed teacher in these classrooms. So I, I approached it as like, this is best practice. Let's try this and see how our kids do. So we did a, a unit, and it was amazing. The first unit we did was an oil spill unit, and we did it with a group of at-risk kids. They all had expulsion points. They all had attendance problems. And it was the last hour of the day, and we started it after spring break. So that kind of tells you what we were up against. <laughs> and it was amazing. Like, they were engaged, and they were doing things, and they were showing up for class. And I had one kid who didn't really give a lot of effort in school, like, try to cheat to win the oil spill lab activity. Like, we saw him, because I, I have it on video, he snuck the Crisco oil around his back and filled up his flask and said, we got our 200 milliliters of oil out of the ecosystem that we built. And I know most teachers would like be, why, why are you cheating? Like, this is wrong, you need to leave. To, for him to care that much to try and cheat was like, oh my gosh, like, I'm just crying. <laughs> Um, driving question boards to keep our kids engaged and we base our we have our phenomena then they ask questions about it so their their questions really drive our unit we do a lot of modeling um, this is our carbohydrate macromolecule unit model and explanation that they do at the end of the unit we have students explaining their units and their results we do claim evidence reasoning, sometimes in this form, sometimes you know in paragraph form. And then we also have our students come up 
and argue from evidence. Um, this is Owen, and he is trying to explain why or why not one of these people in the pedigree has the trait for albinism and how we know. So it's really shifted the classroom. Our kids are engaged. They're doing stuff. They want to do stuff, which makes attendance better and which makes the learning better. We also know that we have to make, make school meaningful for our students. And making it meaningful means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So in horticulture, we always did this like landscape design at the end of the year to kind of pull everything together that we've been working on. So these are some of the students' work. And we decided to use it more as a challenge. So now we take these projects, and we've made a partnership with the community. And some of these projects are actually used in community works. So we've done some things where we've created opportunities for the kids to go out. And this is our bike path that runs behind our school. Some of the student designs went into beautifying the, bar the bike path. So they're working in different sections on planting different flowers. <coughs> there was a lot of research that went into this. We had to find you know, things that grew mostly in shade and with the rain, no one's going to go out there and water them. So what could we you know, plant out there that worked with the rainfall that we have in Illinois and those kinds of things. And then on the bigger scale, we also partner with Habitat for Humanity. So they build several houses in our area every year, and we use some of those design challenges that you saw on the wall to work with the community to actually go plant those landscapes on some of those Habitat for Humanity houses. Because we know that science education is way more than the science classroom. It's really about building a community, and that's really what we're focused on, is taking what we're doing in those science classrooms and really passing it along so we can build that community, <coughs> excuse me, you know, build that community for our students. In this project, we do have parents in there as well as community members. So we're working really hard to take that classroom outside just to make it a bigger picture for everyone. Thank you. Your award winner, but also our scholar winner. We present to you the uh, scholar pin. And, uh, and, uh, and then you also get a little extra money in your check, says uh, uh, this uh, will pay for your trip to uh, NSTA, the national conference in Atlanta, so that you can present your, uh, your work. There. So, there you go. So much great work, and you know, I think we can go on to say that I'm sure that the children in all of these classrooms are so fortunate to have you as their teachers. So once again, thank you for, for all your work. So once again, let's have a round of applause for all of you. And again, we'd like to extend our thanks to uh, Bob Yeager and uh, his, cont his continued leadership and outstanding support to NSTA and science education, and his lifetime accolades to NSTA, the science and science education community, and the emerging leaders um, are, that are our future in science education. So, thanks again. As we uh, begin to uh, end our, 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 you know, our kickoff here, uh, I'd like to once again thank all of the people that have participated. Um, our Jaeger Award is, I'm gonna ask you to stick around for a minute, because we have a, a photo thing that we need to do there. Um, for the rest of you, uh, we will then uh, have our reception just right out the door and to the right. You'll see how that'll start out. And let me remind you that we have breakfast from 7.30 to 8.30 in Grand B, at which time at 8.30 we will begin general session number one. So with that, once again, we thank you all for attending. We'll see you uh, at the bar, and uh, I hope you all have a great evening. Good night. <laughs>